Hey preschoolers, uh, today I want to talk to you about implied volatility. We've been talking about call options and we've been talking about the pricing of call options and what can affect those prices and we talked about how the strike price can affect the price of the call option, uh, how the number of days to expiration can affect the price of a call option, um, things like news, things like earnings coming up and that's what I want to discuss today. Uh, one of the things uh, that you can use to tell whether an option is cheap or expensive is by looking at the implied volatility. Now the implied volatility represents uh, how much the call option price or actually not just the call options but the put options as well uh, it reflects how much premium there is in the options. If the implied volatility is really high, then you can expect to pay a little bit more premium. Uh, in other words, you can expect to pay some more time value on top of the, um, the intrinsic value. The implied volatility, if it's high, means that the extrinsic value or the time value will also be higher. Now, if your implied volatility is low, uh, that would suggest that you're probably going to pay less for the time premium than you would otherwise. So, how do you know what the implied volatility is for your stock? Uh, where can you go to find this? The best place that I have found to uh, look for this is iVolatility.com. You can register on that site for free and then once you do you can do a search <coughs> for a um, uh, any symbol, any stock symbol and when you enter that stock symbol a little chart will come down on the bottom right hand side of the page and it'll have two lines. It'll have a blue line and a gold line. The blue line represents the historical volatility which is reflective of how much the actual stock price is changing. Uh, and then the implied volatility is the gold line and that represents how much the option prices are, are changing. So I, I, you know, I'm, I'm not that smart <laughs> about technology and stuff. So rather than trying to show you this chart on my computer screen because I haven't figured out how to do that yet, you know, I'm still living in the 90s, I went ahead and drew uh, both the price chart and the iVolatility chart for Baidu because I wanted to show you a few things and actually this is probably better anyway because it lets me do a direct comparison. So I chose Baidu because it shows some pretty good spikes and um, this top chart, this is the price chart. It starts back in September. Uh, you can see it goes up a little bit. There's a little bit of a peak in January right here. There's another little bit of a peak in March right here. It goes down. There's a tiny peak in April. And then now in June, we're back up near the highs. Uh, these dates, or these months, just show you where the peaks are. And then up at the top, I have, you probably can't read it, but it says E, each of these is an earnings report. So there was an earnings report on October 29th, one on February 26th, and one on April 24th. Now the next thing that I did was I went to iVolatility.com and I sketched out down here approximately along the same timeline, I tried to get it straight, um, the eye volatility. So again, if you go to eye volatility, this would be the gold line that I drew in here. Now what you can see is the implied volatility varies from about 30% to about 55%. And since you're just preschoolers, I'm not going to go into what those percentages reflect. That's a different class. Um, what I do want to show you though is how the implied volatility kind of goes up and down between these two numbers, 30%, 55%, it goes up and down, up and down. What you notice is that when the implied volatility is high, which means that's when your option prices are going to be a little more expensive, you're going to pay more time premium for those, 
That's right before the earnings report. Now what's going on here? Well, what's going on here is as you get closer to the earnings report, you know, the sharks are starting to circle. They're starting to see that, uh, hey, an earnings report is coming up. We know what happens on earnings reports, right? The stock can move. It can jump or it can tank. Now, it doesn't always, but often there will be a very big move on an earnings report. So what happens is there starts to be a high demand for put and call options both. And when the demand goes up, what happens? the price goes up. So you have folks that are starting to speculate on uh, whether this stock price is going to go up or down on the earnings. They're willing to pay a little bit more for that time premium because they think it's going to go one way or another. They're probably wrong. They shouldn't be trading. They're going to lose their shirts. Anyway, um, so that's what happens with the eye volatility. Now as you get closer to earnings, you can see that the eye volatility generally starts to climb a little bit slowly um, and then right after the earnings report comes out all the news is out <laughs> all the news is out and there's nothing else coming so what happens uh, the stock moves and you get what is called a volatility crush now on the earnings report after the news is out everybody knows what's going on you know, they're not as interested in paying a big premium because the stock's probably not going to move a huge amount. It just did because there was an earnings report. So the I volatility goes down and that means your option price will also go down. So what's the point of all this? Well, the point is if you're going to buy a call option, which I don't recommend ever, even though I do it myself, I, I bought five of them today. Uh, but don't don't do that. Don't don't do it. Please don't do it. I'm sorry. I got sidetracked. Um, the point is, if you're going to buy a call option, you want to buy when the price is low, and sell when the price is high. So if you want to buy cheap, you want to buy when the eye volatility is down here near the 30% range. You don't want to be buying a call option right before earnings when the volatility is way up here at 55%. Number one, you don't want to buy an option before earnings because the stock is going to move. It's either going to tank or it's going to soar and you're going to be wrong. So you're going to lose all your money. Okay, that's the first reason you don't want. You don't, you just don't want to trade over earnings. It's, it's dangerous and you know, leave that to the crazy, insane freaks who get high on trading over earnings, all right? Just don't do it. Don't, don't, please, I'm begging you. I don't even do that. I don't trade over earnings, all right? If I'm, if I'm, no, never mind. I'll, I'll go there later. Um, I don't trade earnings reports because I always get my ass handed to me, okay? So you do not want to buy a call option and hold it over earnings. Just don't do it. You want to buy uh, when the eye volatility is low. So pull the chart up. If you're looking at buying a call, which I don't recommend, pull up the eyevolatility.com, do a search, look at the chart, and see where that gold line is. Now, these numbers are not always going to be the same. They're going to be different for each stock. These numbers, the 30 and the 55%, those just happen to be what's going on for Baidu, all right? If you look at uh, another stock, uh, Google or Apple or whatever, the numbers are going to be pretty far different, okay? The, the numbers on another stock might be 15 and 30. You know, 15 might be the low, 30 might be the high. Uh, so the point is you want to buy when the call option is cheapest, so you want to buy when the yellow line or gold line on iVolatility.com is kind of down near the bottom. Uh, ideally it would be at the bottom, but you want to at least make sure it's in the lower half. You don't want to buy something when it's in the, you know, when the eye volatility is floating up around here at the top because you're going to pay a lot. You're going to pay a lot for that option. Uh, I think that's it on this one. Hey, that was a short video, right? Um, buy low, sell high. 
uh, avoid earnings reports and um, don't trade because you'll lose your shirt, your pants, your underwear, your socks, and everything else that you own. I mean it. Okay? Uh, that's it. Have a great day. Don't trade. I'll see you next time.